still ahead. David Henry is here to talk about his new movie, Grown Ups 2. Coming up, actor David Henry talks about his very first independently produced short film. Okay, my next guest has been acting for a decade, and guess what? He's only 23. <laughs> he was one of the stars of Wizards of Waverly Place, one of my, my kids' favorite shows, and just recently joined a Happy Madison family in Grown Ups 2. Would you please help me in welcoming to the show David Henry? <laughs> Goodness, congratulations too. What Wizards won what like a few Emmys, yeah. Three, right? Yeah, three, yeah. Three. I'll take it. I'll take it. You'll take it? I'll take it. Very, Absolutely. very kind. Very How did kind. that feel when you won? It was unreal. We uh <clears throat> the whole cast was there together. We were sitting in the audience and then, you know, they announced all the nominees, and then when they said our name, like literally all of us just rocketed out of our seats. Louis C.K. actually gave us the award, which was uh Sort of an offbeat choice to give a children's award, but he, uh, <laughs> he made some jokes. It was very funny. Um, and we all ran up there. It was an amazing moment for all of us, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, when you started out doing what? You were doing... I did a bunch of commercials, commercials? when I was like nine years old. I moved from Arizona, family from Arizona. And right. then um, pretty much came out here, started auditioning, and uh, just started booking roles, yeah. So how did it feel when you feel like, you know, I'm young, but hey, I've kind of made it? I, I don't you know. know. What I'm I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. No, I, I've always, I have a big Italian family, so like, I always loved entertaining them. So getting to do it on a bigger level was, it's great. If you make people laugh, there's not a better feeling than, than you know, to, to get someone's attention and to give them a bit of joy in the day. Like, it's nice. You started out as a young child. You've had success in many areas. What advice would you give young kids? Uh, humility. You need humility. The definition of humility is to live in accordance with truth. So you don't think of yourself as bigger or less, just live with truth. You have to understand, you know, your talents and your abilities. And if you have talent, then persevere. But you, you, you need humility. It's very important. You know, that's so true because you meet the same people going up as you do going down. And you ride the wave many times. Yeah. And you're right, humility is what keeps you in truth and yeah. i think that's excellent you're a good guy oh thank you, you know, i like <laughs> you okay so now you're in uh, in grown-ups too yeah with some of your uh comedy icons right yeah. tell them who's in the movie it's uh, adam sandler kevin james chris rock Dave Spade. Uh -huh. yeah. i um i I did a movie uh, in Mexico last year with Kevin James, and he called me up and was like, do you want to do a movie with Adam Sandler, Grown Ups 2? And I was like, let me check my schedule. I'm there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, I grew up, I had, I had uh, when we first moved to LA, I had a couple movies on VHS. It was um, uh, Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore. Right. And uh, I knew every single line from those movies because I would literally <laughs> alternate between the two movies every night. I knew every line. So the whole time when we were, when we were shooting, I was just thinking, man, I want to ask him, like, why well, pick the hockey trophy in Happy Gilmore? I this know, and that. Like, it's true. All I wanted to do is ask him questions. I couldn't do that because I'd come off a little creepy. But, uh, <laughs> oh, you did it? Oh, no, see, I, I, I would have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I so would have. Yeah. So was it fun working with him? It was amazing. Like, you know, when you're acting and then and then Adam Sandler's sort of off screen and he, he's like, hey, try this, try that. I'm like, oh, Adam Sandler's telling me to try something. All right, you know. <laughs> it, was, it was great. It was, it was a, a, a dream come true. So you are an actor and a writer and you also, are you directing? Yeah, no, I just, um, I wrote for Wizards of Waverly Place for the last two seasons, like the third and fourth season. I knew I that you had write. written for that, right. Yeah, so then after that, I'd been wanting to direct for a long time. So I wrote and... Uh, with a, with a co-writer, I wrote a short film, and then I pretty much went out and raised all the money and uh, had a five-day shoot. Um, it's basically about this eight-year-old father who has, I mean, eight-year-old father. <laughs> well, that's a unique concept. A, you know, no. We're really going for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's an eight-year-old boy who loves his father, and his dad's getting too busy with work, so it's showing uh, the depths that a kid will go through to get his dad's attention. What a great and concept. I yeah, I think it's a very sort of uh, contemporary issue that's out there right now. People struggle. So with you're being. 23. You're doing all this. You're an underachiever. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. I love. I love your ambition. So, what is the process of going about 
making this movie? Has it been? It, it's it's been unreal. Like getting to be getting to edit. Like I've never been I've never edited before. So seeing how little tweaks here and there really shape the whole. They say when you write it, it's born. When you shoot it, you kill it. And then when you edit. You rebirth the movie. So, Isn't that interesting? Yeah, that's that's the saying, and I completely understand now because all the little tweaks and the little fine details, music cues, subtleties in performance, like make the biggest difference. And, and they really do make a huge difference. Yeah. Even the little sound effects and all the kinds yeah. of things you put in. Yeah, completely. So it's been it's been absolutely. So are you a detailed kind of guy? Um, in my personal life, yeah. Not, not. I'm working on that. I'm trying to be a little more detailed, but with with think with you know my career and everything, very detailed. Yes. Are you are you seeing anyone? Uh, not at the moment. Okay, I'm oh, a really good fixer-upper. Please, please, yeah. <laughs> Hook it up. Hook it I up. am a matchmaker. I'm with you. I'm with okay. you. Yes, yes. <laughs> hey, stick around because I'm going to ask David some more things. He, you just got back from an amazing trip. Guys, you have, it was in Peru, wasn't yeah, it? Peru. You have to hear about this. And he picked up a new skill along the way. Stay with us. It's awesome. Coming up, David Henry reflects on his service trip of a lifetime. We are back with actor David Henry, who is just darling, isn't he? He's so cute. And when he's not writing or producing or directing or whatever, he, you're traveling. And your recent trip to... Pura Peru. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. How, okay, so first of all, you were doing the movie... Um, uh, Little Boy. And you met the director there. Yeah, I, w I became close friends with the director and the producers. And uh, one of the producers, we were out to dinner one night after the film, and he was like, I do, I do big trips around the world to help people out. He's like, do you want to go with me on one of these trips? And again, I was like, oh, let me check my schedule. Sure. <laughs> And I was like, you know, the, the the Disney show gave me a big following, big social media following. I was like, let's let's utilize that and try to inspire some people and show some people that people in Hollywood are concerned with things that are greater than them. So we put together, yeah, there's there's a. Do you, do you like there. giving back? Does that mean a lot to you? Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, we went, we we pretty much put together a whole documentary and brought 30 of our friends and went there and pretty much just gave ourselves to the people. We built houses. We uh, brought food to people who didn't have any, who were starving. There's me building a roof. That didn't go very well. <laughs> <laughs> what they, happened? They sent me up there to build a roof. They were like, do you know how to build a roof? And I was like, no, absolutely not. And they were like, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just put the sheets over each other, and then you nail it into the piece of wood underneath it. And I was like, OK, great, sure, I got it, I got it. So I get up there, and I'm missing the stud underneath. And I'm, you know, but I'm figuring it out. I'm getting, I'm getting the planks in there. <laughs> yeah, but you're being a stud. <laughs> <laughs> you're too good, you're too good. Um, so I'm, I'm hammering the thing, right? Finally, we finish it, and we sort of did this segment as a part of the documentary where we'd finish the, the house. And it's pretty much a bamboo house. And then we'd give the key to the people who live there, oh, like, here's cool. your brand new house. It's sort of like a makeover type of a thing. So we finish the house. We give them the key. They go in the house. It was amazing. They start crying. They don't have beds. You know, they sleep. Yeah. The, the kids sleep on the floor. They don't have pillows. Like, they were freaking out really because humbling. they got a, because they have a pillow. So then it starts to rain. And then all the water starts coming in from all the holes I missed on the roof. And I was like, oh, man. You know, we gave them this beautiful house. They're crying. And now they're getting rained on at night. I would have said, I built you an inside waterfall. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. That would have been. Which would have so, thought of that. So what did they do to fix it? We had to hire a whole crew to come in the next day to put the roof on how it was supposed oh, to be geez. put on. <laughs> yeah, really embarrassing. <laughs> Really embarrassing. It's awesome. Needless to say, I just hammered things from then on have out. You, have you learned to put a roof on now? Yes, they showed me the correct technique. I was way off. <laughs> way off. I wasn't even hey, slightly in the ballpark. There's never any wrong. You just learn a new skill. Exactly. So exactly. what What? What was the most um, eye-opening thing that you learned on that trip? I you know, Before I was going there, I thought, I'm going to go there to help people out. I'm just going to give myself to the people, do whatever I can to help people out. But when I came back, I took so much more, I learned so much more, and I took so much more out of it than I think I could have ever possibly done there. Like, you take things for granted out here. You have, we have air conditioning, we have, we go to dinners, we have cars, we, we pretty much have everything at our fingertips, cell phones, all these things. There, they have absolutely nothing. They don't even have a bathroom. I know. They have to dig holes in the ground and then bury it afterwards. But it was sort of humbling because although they don't have everything that we have here, they have the floor, they have family, they have love, and they, they're very religious people. They have their, their faith in God. And so it's sort of 
in, in hindsight, I'm looking back going, wow, I have a lot of distractions from what's really important, which is my family and my friends, That's my loved very ones, my, my, my faith. So it, uh, it was really eye-opening for me to see how, you minus the distractions, you're stripped to your core of what's really important, what really matters in life. And uh, what, is, what does faith mean to you? I think it, I think it's I think it's very important. I think I think so many young people nowadays don't believe in anything or don't believe in anything anything bigger than themselves. And I think I think that's such a such a mistake. It's tough, you know, when you're when you're when you define your own existence, that can lead you down a lot of you know straight paths. So I think it's important to put your belief in something bigger than in you. a higher power. Yeah, yeah, especially young people too. Would you would you go back? Would you go do it again? Oh, I'm going back for sure. Yeah, I, I want to go. go back soon. I yeah. want to go. I'd love. Are you kidding me? It's incredible. It, it really is absolutely incredible. And then after that, we went. Uh, Machu Picchu gave us permission to, <gasps> to wrap the documentary on top of Machu Picchu. No way. So yeah. Could you breathe up there? It was very hard. It is hard. It Did you get a, like migraines and headaches? You know what they do there? Actually, they they put these special leaves called coca leaves. They're cocaine leaves. <laughs> It, it, it's, I want to go. Told, it's not at all. Not at all. The, yeah. <laughs> Ray, when, Ray, when you pull up there, they're well, like. Well, you, you do get high, don't you? Yeah, you're very. It's like 13,000 feet. And if anyone likes skis, that's like 8,000 feet. So it's even higher. It's and they crazy. literally give you this tea. They put the leaves in the tea. And it, it gives you a lot of caffeine. So you have a lot. It does something to your blood so you can breathe better. Like oxygenates You just your, don't know you're nothing not breathing. To do with it. It's totally legal. It's totally legal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So. Well, it has to be legal. Yeah, you got to do something to take the pain away. You can't breathe. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, you know what? You you just are a really good role model to so many people. How do you, and, and I know that my kids, my kids have said that about you. They said, you're just a really, really good person. And do you feel a sense of responsibility with that, or, or do you even go there? When I first, when I first like, started, started um, getting notoriety on the show and like, people would come up to me and whatnot, I, at first I was sort of like, I'm an actor, I just want to entertain, this is my thing, you know, I don't, I don't want the attention or any of that stuff. But now, looking back on it, I'm like, but that's what you get, you know? You want to entertain people, that, that's what happens. And that responsibility is on your shoulders no matter what. So if it is on your shoulders, you need to make the best of it. You need to, you need, people are looking up to you, so you need to set an example to lead people in a, in a good direction and not a bad direction. So it wasn't that in the beginning, but now that I've gotten a little older and I've learned more, I think it's, it's, it's important for people who have audiences to set good examples, because people look up to you and you, you lead them astray and that's no good, you know. Do you know, I'll tell you, I've been around a few decades myself and I believe that every great entertainer has a good heart. And I tell you, you're gonna be around a long time. He's awesome. Oh, thank you. It's really just a joy to have you on the show. Thank you. So come back anytime. You. We'll play. Yeah. <laughs> and don't forget to catch Grown Ups 2. It's in theaters July 12th. July 12th. And stay with us. Kook is coming back.